Go ahead. Yes, I can. I have not contacted anyone. I have not been able to contact anyone about that yet. Or actually, I did contact distance learning. I have not got a response the last time I checked my email. Okay. Okay. Um, huh? Um, I don't know. I did raise the question to distance learning, and they will they'll uh, look into that. One thing I do, like for example, um, you can sort of follow in the book. The apps have, um, you know, we're following them sequentially. So as far uh, if you download the apps from Deedle, you can work on, uh, you know, you can make sure you have the sample apps loaded. So when I load a sample app. If you have a laptop there, I'm not sure, do you have a laptop? Yeah. Yeah, you could, you could actually look on your screen instead of mine, and that might, might, that might be helpful for some of the issues. But I did contact distance learning, that's right, and I, I have not heard back from them. All right. Okay. We are going to cover a couple of concepts before... before we um, dive in and looking at the code. Uh, just to make sure that we have some background and, and we're all on the same page for a couple of these. First of all, the question was raised last time about Android Studio versus Eclipse. I downloaded and installed Android Studio. I haven't had tons of time to play with it. My perspective is we're here to learn Android, we're here to learn Android development and not the IDE. So if you're hell-bent on using Android Studio, that's fine with me. Most of the examples will uh, be in, uh, I'll go using Eclipse just to keep it consistent with what's in the book. Um, I might, as I get more familiar with Android Studio, just show it just to talk about maybe some of the advantages and disadvantages. As you might imagine, go figure. When you surf the internet and look for people's opinions like, like that, there is quite a wide range of opinions on it. People like, nah, stick with Eclipse, nah, Android Studio is way better. So, again, for what we're doing in this class, it doesn't appear like there's a huge difference. Our focus is going to be on the code and not necessarily too much on the IDE. So, um, I'll do most of the examples in Eclipse. We might look at, at a, a few things in there just to compare and contrast the two IDEs. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is DIPs, sometimes indicated just as DPs. And this, when I first started uh, reviewing uh, Android, this is a very uh, confusing concept. Um, hopefully it'll be simpler um, for you folks now that I can possibly give you some advice. DPI stands for Density Independent Pixels. It's a way of standardizing the size of images within your Android app depending on the screen density of the device you're using. Notice it does not say screen size independent pixels. So this doesn't relate to the physical size, this relates to the density. In other words, how many dots are there per inch? All right? And there's a, um, there's a, a, a guide that talks about what is um, in each range. Let's see if I can find that here. Oops, my mistake. A density of between 100 and 
the mid hundreds, say 140 is considered to be low density. Right around the middle hundreds, 150, 160 is considered medium density. The upper hundreds to the upper 200s is considered high density, and the upper 200s on up is considered extra high density. All right. How does this come in play? When we talk about density, we're talking about how close the dots are spaced together. So, I'm going to grossly exaggerate this, but let's say we have two screens. A higher density one and a lower density one. In a higher density one, the dots will be very close together. So, let me go in and let me make some dots that are very close together. In a low density, the dots, by dots I mean pixels, all right, are spread further apart. So if I just straight up to use pixels to, to determine the size of something, let's say, and again, I have a two by two image, two pixel by two pixel image, a tiny little image, all right? On a high density screen, it would be this big. Well, let's make it three by three. We'll make it a little bigger. We'll live large. It would be this big on a high density. It would be this big on a low density. So that isn't good, right? You'd have a great, beautiful, high density screen. And if I de defined image size based on pixels, all the images would be tiny. So instead, we define images based on um, DPIs or density or DIPs rather, density, uh, density independent pixels, and it's like this. All right. Medium density is considered to be in the ballpark of. 160 dots per inch, 160 pixels per inch. Low density is considered to be about 75% that, which would be 120 dpi. And high density would be approximately 1.5 times that, which would be 240 dpi. So, what do we do? If I want to make an image, let's say an icon, the same size across different densities of screens, all right? A typical icon in a medium density screen would be 48 pixels wide. So at medium density, that's considered the baseline. So 48 pixels at medium density would be 48 DIP. At the medium level is a one-to-one -one correspondence. At the low level, 48 DPI, we would multiply by 0.75 and we would get 36, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Three quarters, yeah, 36. So our icons in a low density display should be 36 pixels. Finally, in the high density, it is 48. DIP, 
which would equal 72. Thanks for doing that, because for those of you that don't know, this is my comeback week, and I am exhausted today. All right, so any mental math that I don't have to do is a blessing. All right, so what we're going to do in all our apps is we're going to have three icons. And we can do this for other images as well if it's relevant. And we're going to scale them based on these ratios. The ratios are, you know, three, four, six, and eight, I believe. This is medium, this is low, high, and extra high. So what does that mean? That means that we want to use a 36 pixel icon on low density devices. A 48 pixel on medium density. And finally, a 72 pixel in high density. Well, how do you make a different image for different versions of the app. By different versions, I mean different screen densities of the app. Pardon me? Well, yeah, Photoshop, that's how you'd make the images. But how do you tell Android which icon to use? Right. And that, again, we talked about last time, resource and resource qualifiers. All right? An icon and other images are resources. We can qualify resources with any number of different things, including language, screen size, screen density, so that we can tell Android, hey, if you're on a low density device, use this for the icon. If you're on a medium density, use this. If you're on a high density, use this. So all we have to do is supply the alternate resources. The Android system and the Android framework takes care of it to make sure. Now there's going to be slight variations, right? Because these ranges, these are like you're left with something that is 220 dpi that would be still considered a high density, in which case that ratio would be a little off. But well, you, did the, you do the best that you can. It's better than simply having one image. So let's pull up the welcome application. All right. Let's pull up the Android welcome application that we looked at last time and talk about the icons. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are you, you can your program can query the um, the device to ask it how big it is. But the nice thing is, is you really don't have to do that. I guess that's my point. It's not like you have to, it's not like you have to say, write code to say, is this high density? If so, use this image. If so, use this. If it's not, then use this image. You simply define a list of resources using the resource qualifiers, and the system takes care of using the proper resource depending on, on that. All right. Here is a list of all the resource qualifiers or alternative resources that you can put in. Let me the mobile country code, the language and region. So for example, we could have an English resource file, we can have a French resource file. We can further qualify it for US English versus UK English by indicating not just the language but the region that it's in. Likewise, if there's any subtle differences between the French that they speak in France and the French that they speak in Canada, you could qualify that as well. Layout direction. Again, certain cultures, all right, Arabic, Hebrew, all right, the characters go the other way. 
All right. Do you have to code that? No, you don't. You simply supply a resource file, and the Android framework takes care of that for you. Smallest width, so you can do things based on the, the size of the screen. Available width, available height, screen size, in general terms, small, medium, and large. Screen aspect, whether it is longer or more, whether it's a stretched out rectangle or a shorter rectangle. Screen orientation, UI mode, all the way down the line. The ones that we're going to be um, most interested in will be the screen density in the languages. But there's a lot of other ones available too. So you can really, by following good programming practices, make a very maintainable and a very, how can I say it, um, localizable application. So the device that is on, you can gear things to the screen size, screen density, the language of it. Before I go in and we look at the, the welcome application again. Let's take a look at uh, an Android device for those of you that have not seen an Android device. And according to this, the battery is almost dead on this guy, which is surprising. All right, here's what we're going to do while I run upstairs. We're not going to do anything because I'm not running upstairs as I walk as quickly as I am, I am uh, uh, can do painlessly. Um, talk about
better? Okay. So, hopefully we can, well, we can see this somewhat. All right, there is good. Okay, Android devices typically have a touch screen, touch keyboard. Well, I, what I do is I want to go into the settings because that's that's what I want to examine here. First of all, to use an Android device for development, you have to change a few settings. Unlike your Apple devices, which you have to quote jailbreak to install software that you don't get from the Apple i Apple i Store. What's it called? The Apple Store, App Store, right? Um, you can install your own applications um, on Android, but that protection is built in and you have to go and you have to um, allow it. So if we go to settings, and again this is slightly different on each device, but if we go under developers option, there's a choice to say USB debugging. Debugging mode launches when USB is, and I want that enabled. Allow mock locations. I have that enabled. And let's see. Also, under applications, I have checked for... I had something checked for that too. Security, my mistake. Allow installation of non-market apps. And I could click that and that will allow me to install the apps that I make. Yes? If anybody has a new iPhone, new Android, That's right. That's right. I had to do that on my phone. That is correct. If, if you have a newer Android device, um, you have to do something, tap on something to screen seven times. It's something really goofy. It's almost like the old cheat codes on the, on the Dreamcast, right? R you know, right joystick, left joystick, you know, along those lines. But that's right. But you could, you could, I'm sure you can Google it and it will tell you. They want to hide it. Yeah, right. Yeah. The idea is... The idea is, is this is security that you're slightly compromising your security by allowing these things. But the thought is, if you're a software developer, you're smart enough to know what you're doing. All right? Um, and by hiding it, the thought is, well, if someone accidentally stumbles uh, across it, um, you know, we, we, we don't want them to do that. But that's a, that's a good point. Now, this is something you do on the Android device, not on your... Um, not within your Eclipse installation. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to show as far as that goes. Okay. We want to talk about XML. We'll come to that. But for now, I want to continue and finish up the discussion on uh, resource qualifiers and on um, DIPs. So let me go in and let me import the welcome app, which is just a goofy little app that throws up a little bug.
Okay, I can go and run it. And let's just make sure that it runs correctly. One thing to keep in mind, the one thing that burned me last time, is if it was already installed on this machine, we'd have to uninstall that. We'll go, uh, um, otherwise, unless you've made like a change to it. Um, if it was like installed with a different version of the software or whatever, let's see. Is the welcome installed on here? Does not appear to be. So I'll go right mouse and run as Android application. Again, it gives me a choice of do I want the actual devices connected to it with a minimum API of level 15. That's why it shows up. This, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, the version of Android is the API 15. So I can pick that. And then, OK, and there we go. Ah, right here. Reinstallation failed due to different application signatures. You must perform a full uninstall of the application. All right. So it's, uh, in other words, what it's telling me is I already have that welcome app configured somewhat differently on this. So I have to go and, and uninstall it. So I will go to click, and again, this is a little bit different on all devices, but on this particular one, I click on install. I then find that application. Which I am not seeing. Ah, a large welcome. I'll bet you that's the one. You have a several little buttons, virtual buttons on Android. This is your home button. This is the button that you only have on iPhone devices. But you also have a you have a button to pull up running apps. And you have this guy that takes a screenshot. All right, so I'm going to hit back to go back. And now I'm going to go and try and install it. Pick my device. It's installing it, and here we go. Away we go. There is the app that's running. You can see you have the little robot and the little bug. All right. Now, let's go back and revisit. Let's go back here and notice that what we have, we have the icon here for welcome. If I were to install it on a lower density screen, it would be that same size. I don't know off the top of my head what density this screen is. I think it is a high density, but I'm not, not really sure. Let's look at the different versions of the icon and let's look and notice how the resource qualifier is used. We alluded to this last time. I want to spend a little bit more time looking at it. So, under resources, <clears throat> drawables are essentially your images. And if you notice, we have actually four directories for high density, low density, medium density, and extra high density. It would be nice if alphabetically they went from small to high or high to small, but it doesn't. It's you know, high density, then low, then medium, then extra high. And if we look at these, again, we'll see that a medium density has an icon that is
100 by, oh, that's percent. <laughs> 48 by 48. And low density icon should be 32 by 32. And finally, the high density icon should be 72 by 72. I clicked on the wrong one. Now, note as, as we do this, that there's nothing in the code, and we haven't looked at the code yet, but we'll note that there's nothing in the code that is like a series of if statements that says use this if it's high density. That's part, that's part and parcel, that's built into the Android framework. As long as you create different resource and alternative resources and use the resource qualifiers any of the legal resource qualifiers you can go and you can change this based on the density of the screen and again size of the screen based on the language let's go in to play a little bit more with the resource qualifiers and look at these strings all right I have a values what if I wanted to make a French version of this application? What do you suppose I would need to do? What would I need to make? I would need to make a separate XML file. I'll make a value. What will the folder that it will be in? Will it be in this folder or will it be in its own folder? Pardon me? It will be in the resource folder, but it will it'll have a folder distinct in the English language one. And what will the folder be called? <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear that. It's probably a... Oh, lay values? Yeah, good answer. Good answer. No, not lay values. Well, it'll be values-fr. So you have the name of the resource followed by the resource qualifier. And again, you can chain those together. Remember we said if there was French, French versus Canadian French, you could say FR-R FR to be only if I'm physically, you know, only if my region is French. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste in there. And I'm going to call my new thing values-fr. And there it is. And I still have my string XML file. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make, and again, depending on how well my high school French holds up, I might actually translate or I might put le in front of every word. All right. Here's the string XML file. And... For now, I'll say bonjour. Oh, tout le monde. I think that means good day to everyone. Bienvenue. Okay, so I made my strings file and I can go save it. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to redo my Android device to be French. And hopefully I, I know enough French to be able to send it back to English when I'm done. So let me go to settings. And the question always is, where does it lo not locate? Language and input. There we go. The language it says is United States English. I can click on that, and I can pick one of these other languages. And I'll pick French. 
Notice that all of a sudden some of these things have different names than they had before. Dropbox is still Dropbox. I don't know, maybe there's no word in French for Dropbox or maybe they didn't make a resource file for Dropbox. Gallery, though, is now spelled the French spelling, G-A-L-E-R-I-E, -E, instead of the regular um, English spelling. Instead of play games, play livres, or no, I'm sorry, play, uh, instead of play books, it's play livres. Instead of settings, parameters, and so on. So let's now go and run this app with the French resource file. I'm going to go right back over to that anyhow, yeah. And sure enough, if we look, it has my French words to it. The application says Bienvenue, Bienvenue CISS 265, and so on. Now, we could, if we wanted to, we could use these resource qualifiers any way that makes sense. For example, that little B. Maybe the B has some cultural meaning in France. I don't know. I'm just making this up. I could substitute a different, I could substitute a B with a beret on it, for example, if I was in France. Or if I had a flag on this page, I could put the flag of the United States on the American one, the flag on uh, the French flag on the French one. Yes? Shouldn't he be riding a bicycle with a baguette under his arm? Should, he should be riding a bicycle with a baguette under his arm. And how do we do that? We would do that by creating a different resource qualifier. So it would create a drawables-fr. We could extend these drawables. We can, we can put a lot of resource qualifiers. So we could do a high-density B riding a bike with a baguette. We could do a medium density and low density. So you can mix and match all these things uh, for that. The point I wanted to show you is, in one respect, it can be a little confusing that like all this stuff is all over the place. But it gives you that flexibility. I haven't made any coding changes at all. All I've done is gone in and just manipulated a little bit in an XML file. And all of a sudden, I have a multilingual application. And again, if I'm not French, I'll get simply the default values. So I don't have to go and make one for every nation. Um, you know, in this particular case, everyone gets the values that are in the values folder. And French, if your device is set for French, it gets set, uh, you get the values that are in the values-fr. All right? Questions on any of this? This is very powerful, and again, this is another example of separating stuff out into its own components. And again, in one respect, that's kind of a pain because stuff is all over the place, but in another respect, um, it uh, is beneficial because it allows you to swap out a component, or even in this case, let the Android framework framework swap out a component for you. Let's spend a minute looking at the XML file. And what I'm going to do, since there's problems viewing this at the remote site, is I'm going to open up text edit. And hopefully I can make the text bigger. Under format, yeah, there you go. All right. 
While I was gone getting the other device, I asked you to um, discuss XML files. And again, just for, yeah, and I'm sure you guys did that. All right. All right, um, XML files are used for a lot of resources. They're used for many of the resources within an Android application. For example, this strings file is an XML file. What's great about an XML file is the X in XML actually stands for extensible, which probably should be an E, but it's an X, all right? And that means that you can create a system of tags, all right, that correspond to any use that you could dream up. So the makers of Android dreamed up all these different resource file layouts, such as a strings file, and in a bit we're going to be looking at the layout file. And it's a very standardized language. It makes use of tags just like HTML does. The tags need to be properly nested. You have to have an ending tag for every starting tag. There has to be a single root node. Notice this is resources and resources. And there has to be a document type declaration at the beginning. Other than that, it's similar to HTML, just with a different set of tags. All right, it's sort of a stricter version of HTML. In fact, HTML sort of was a spin-off of XML, sort of a simplified, we're going to cheat in a couple of places version of, of XML. Now, in the case of a string, all right, in the case of the string resource, the resources is a root node. There then is a series of string tags. And each string tag has a name attribute that's part of it. And the body of the string tag is the actual value of the string. All right? The program then doesn't access the value of the string. The program accesses the name of the string. In other words, the word hello, app name, welcome, those are English, English language words. But that's OK. They're not going to be displayed. That's within the program. So presumably in this case, the programmer understands English, so they can use those, those words for that. The application then is going to look up the name of the string resource and pull the value in. All right. And again, if we, if we looked at the English one, we'd see the exact same thing, the only difference being that there would be um, the English terms between there. So, XML again, use of tags, has to be an ending tag, has to be a root node, has to be nested properly. Um, that's sort of the main thing with XML files, but they can then be defined for a variety of different purposes, and the creators of the Android framework developed this string um, the string uh, XML file to contain the hard-coded strings. Now, again, we mentioned that. Why is this a good thing? It's good because of maintainability. We easily saw how I could go and make a, a different language version simply by going and editing this. What's more, if there was a welcome message that appeared on several views within the app, I would only need to change it in one place. All right, it's almost like a global variable kind of thing. All right, where I can set that there, then I don't have to worry about maybe calling it welcome CISS 265 and in another page making a mistake and saying welcome CISS 268 or something like that. That's one XML file. The second XML file that we're going to look at is the layout XML file. This is one thing reportedly that the Android Studio does a lot better than Eclipse, and that is showing the graphical view of what your screen is going to look like.
But graphical views are no fun at all. You want to look at the code. All right? And that code, the layout, is represented again in an XML file. All right? Again, we have the XML file, the, the declaration of the type. We have some comments. In this one, the root node is the relative layout. We'll notice several um, different kinds of layouts. The relative layout means that each element's position is expressed relative to some other element's position. All right, we'll see what I mean by that. The first element sort of sets a pace here, is the text that displays the welcome message. Text view. Here's some other attributes on the relative layout, um, wrap content, um, and so on. The background color. We then give each element an ID. All right, we'll see that in, in a second. That's not actually too essential in this case because we're not doing any real coding with this. We're simply popping the screen up. But when we look at an example next week, we'll see an example where we have to like point to a text box on the screen. So we have to, we have to refer to a value. Here is the welcome text, or the bienvenue text in French. Notice that this is a text view. Wrap content means make it as big as it needs to be, the width and the height. The text size is 40 SP. SPs are to fonts as DIPs are to um, images. We give it an ID, we give it a text color, a text style, some other things. But here's where we specify that the value of this comes from the welcome string. All right? So what this means, when you see Android text equals at string slash welcome, it means go into the string resource file and pull out the entry that has a name of welcome. So in this case, We go into the strings file and we pull out the text that has a value of welcome. So in the English version, it's going to be welcome to CISS uh, 265, rather. So that's how within our XML layout we can refer to our string text. All right, so we have a text field. We have a image view, let me put some spaces between it, and we have another image view. The top image view is for the um, little Android robot. The second one is for the little bug. Now, what do I want to say here? These image views and text views would be similar to, those of you that have done ASP.NET coding, these would be like the ASP.NET controls. All right? And this would be, those of you that have done ASP.NET uh, coding, this would be similar to the ASPX file. This is the view. This is the, the, the um, uh, model view control. Yeah, this is a view. All right? This is the user interface. And the other things, you know, are separated from this. Notice that we don't have to say anywhere in here which bug to use. Do I use the high density or the low density or whatever? 
the Android framework sorts that out. Likewise, we don't have to say to use the English string or the French string. The a Android framework sorts that out. We simply say the string resource and it's Android's job to decide which of the string resources to use. Now in this case we say that this has the drawable called Android, which is the drawing of the little robot. And the second image is a drawable of bug. So what this says is give me a screen, give me a view that has three things. Text, robot, bug. Now, since this is a relative layout, we express the position of the things relative to other things on the page. So if we look at the robot, it says, oh, that's the text view. If we look at the robot, it says this guy belongs below the welcome text view. I guess I lied. We do need an ID in this case. So ID at plus welcome text view. That defines the ID for this element. This references the ID for this element. So this says I want to put this image below the thing that has an ID of welcome text view. And what has the, the ID of welcome text view? This guy does. And then if we look at this one, it says the layout is below um, the droid robot view, all right? The, the droid robot image. So the bug is the last thing. Questions? This takes a while to get used to, to developing GUIs like this. Um, but, Again, it's not, not particularly difficult. It's very similar to developing an HTML or in, in um, um, ASP.NET, an ASPX page. Pardon me? WPF being? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Well, whatever, whatever analogy works for you to connect it to something you've done before. Um, but again, this is a presentation layer of this. All right, the one thing we have not looked at is the code that actually runs this. And because this doesn't do much, obviously there's not much code here. All right, so let's go and let's look under source. We have our Java class that doesn't do much. All right. This is the entirety of the Java code um, that runs. And we'll go over some of this, and some of this we'll sort of gloss over and come back to later. First of all, we define what package this belongs to, which we had already said is using sort of that reverse um, URL notation, because the folks at Deedle Publishing made this, instead of, and their address is deedle.com. Reversing it is com.deedle. And it's the welcome example, so welcome. We import a couple of um, packages. How many of you are familiar with Java? Um, how many of you have done C Sharp? Okay. Um, Java is very uh, C Sharp like, or actually C Sharp is very Java like. So um, we will spend a little bit of time. Um, reviewing some Java concepts, but essentially if you use a class as part of the framework, you typically import the package that that's in, then you can simply refer to the class by the class name. So right here, I say 
public class welcome extends activity. If I didn't specify to import activity, every place I said activity here, I'd have to say android.app.activity. So this just me allows me the shortcut of just using the class name. All of these apps are going to have at least one activity. An activity roughly corresponds to like something the user does, like clicking the icon to fire up the app. So all of our classes, uh, or I'm sorry, all of our apps are going to have one class that extends activity. What extends means, and again, this is not a Java concept, it's an object-oriented concept, but what extend means is that this is a subclass of activity, which means that everything that an activity can do, it can do, plus any other stuff that we put in here. And in this case, we're overriding the onCreate method, which specifies when this class is created, this is what we do. All right. We are going to gloss over this one, the on create, and we're going to talk about this, set content view. What that does is that brings up the user interface. Where does that get the user, where does it get the code? How does it know what the user interface is to look like? It's in our resources dot layout and it's in the main XML file. So right there it pulls from that XML file that we looked at before and uses that and makes that the activities makes that the activities new view. Or, or, I'm sorry, it makes it its content view. So, notice again that I don't specify any resource qualifiers with this. I simply say r.layout. Well, I don't have any resource qualifiers for layout in this case, so everyone's going to get the same screen. But I could make a different screen for large displays. And those large displays then would get that layout. Let's see how we can do that, just for laughs. So what I'm going to do, here, here's my goal. When I run this on a big screen, I want to... I don't know, see two bugs instead of one bug. All right, we have, we, have, we have a bigger screen, might as well have more bugs, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the resource qualifier for screen size. And I'm going to say large. All right. So I'm going to go... And I'm going to say, I'm going to create, I'm going to copy this folder. I'm going to call it layout large. And then what I can do is I can edit this XML file to do something different. And I'm just going to, for laughs, make a second bug. I'm going to tell it to put it after the first bug. Right, 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 right. <laughs> All 
All right, let's go and let's try running this. And voila, pardon my French. And notice what we have. We have resource qualifiers that are being used because A, I'm on a big screen. Uh, B, um, I, have, I forgot to set this back to English, so it's still in there as a uh, French uh, device. If I were to run this on a small Android device that was set to English, it would have the English words and it would only have one of the two bugs. All right. So I think you can see how these components and these resource files and being able to specify alternate resource files really goes a long way in making our coding flexibility and being able to take one basic app and having it work better in different environments. Questions about this? Are you okay in Ridgevale? Okay. <laughs> you had me worried for a second there. All right. Um, next week, What we're going to do is we're going to cover a, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. We, we might cover an app that I wrote um, that, um, that will reinforce these concepts. And then in addition, we'll start doing a little bit of either Java review or if you've never done Java before, a little intro to Java. All right. Um, if there are no questions, that's, that's all I had. All right. Have a good weekend. Have a good Labor Day. And, and we'll see you next week. Yes? Oh, um, oh, you mean, you mean the last session? Um, you are, you are welcome. If, if you want to stay there, do you have Skype on your machine? All right. My suggestion for you would be to install Skype. And then every time I'll touch base with you to see if you have any questions. And during this lab session, you know, if you have questions or problems, you can Skype into me or I can, I can uh, uh, Skype into you and I can see what questions you have and go over them that way. All right? Um, if, you, if you've completed the first lab, no. Then, then the second lab is out there. Uh, a second first lab is simply to make sure your development environment is set up correctly on your machine and then getting some screenshots of, uh, of different things. I did start looking at it. But again, by Tuesday of next week, um, if you have uh, Skype installed, then, then we can touch base and we can do things that way. We can, I can communicate with you at Ridgeville that way. All right, thanks. We'll see you next week.